I'm going to call the meeting to order. I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Uh, the first agenda item uh, we have tonight is the approval of the agenda. Can I get a motion? Second. Second. Yes. Good deal. Uh, next, we have approval of the minutes. Um, has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? Yes. Can I get a motion? So moved. All right. Um, with us tonight, we have Mrs. Mayo, Yolanda Mayo. She's uh, in a new leadership shadow member position with the board, and we would like for her to um, just give us a little history, uh, background, info. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Yolanda Mayo. I'm a retired United States Marine uh, in the Marine Corps for 31 years. Um, and proud to be here in Jacksonville. Although I'm originally from Michigan and my husband is from New York, we decided to make Jacksonville our home. And um, part of making it our home is getting involved in our community, which is one of the reasons for, for me being here tonight. Um, we have raised two children right here in Jacksonville who have taken place, who have um, participated in, in many of your, your recreation events here within Jacksonville, also graduates from Jacksonville High School. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing what I can do to assist. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And before we move on, um, um, I was informed that Mr. Jim Wheeler is uh, no longer on the board with us. He has taken a um, position with the, uh, with the city. So um, we want to thank him for being a part of our board. And he's done this for a lot of years. So mm -hmm. thank you, Mr. Wheeler, if you're watching. Thank you. Sure he is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, next agenda item is the director's report, new business, old business. Mike. Thank you very much. So, you know, every other month I sit down here and I try and tell you what we're doing. And this month I'm going to, I'll probably do a little bit of that, but I, I just did some pictures and wrote some things down. Sometimes uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. So, we did some things and uh, I wanted you to see them. Good. Yes, I did want go. you, I there really did want you to see them. <laughs> so if you haven't been by Brook Valley, uh, I know we had talked a little bit about Branchwood and the work we had done to the bridge over there and we replicated that and put a Trex, uh, replaced the wooden bridge with some Trex over at Brook Valley Park. Uh, we've um, pressure wash, power wash, whatever word you want to put in there, the trail bridge at Woodlands Park. If you've never been on that nature trail, it's a nice trail. We finished the fence at the marina. If you've not been down to the marina, the white fence down there, it, it was uh, quite a job for us, but we did get it done. We're very happy. If you have the opportunity, take a ride down there and look at it. Uh, the basketball rims at Kerr Street, we have done this to a couple of our outdoor courts. If that doesn't seem like a big deal to you, it is to us because we had some rims up there that uh, didn't receive the nets very well. So we constantly had an issue with the nets. So these rims are gonna allow us to have nets up, keep them up, and uh, you know that's what the park needs. The players need a nice uh, facility and this is part of taking those steps. Uh, if you're not aware, we had Arbor Day at Fire Station 3 on April 23rd. I know some of you are aware of that. And a sure sign of summer, and I'm sure Susan, uh, when she's talking to you, will, will expound on this, is that we put the shade structures up over at Jack Amiet. You know, we installed them that last year and we used them, but we're able to take the actual shade part of it down during the winter, and we have put those up. And I'm not going to tell you why we put them up. We'll let Susan talk a little bit about that when she, <laughs> when she talks to you. We've also uh, had some dead trees on the trail and repaired some boards there. And, and if you're not aware, we did do some uh, major, we pressure washed the whole rails of trail. And uh, what a difference that made. We've also painted inside the tunnels. 
and we've installed installed some mulch at the Henderson Green uh, Mill Creek area. And you can see this is some of the work we've done over at uh, Brook Valley Park, uh, and we have gotten kind of like at Brancherwood a good reception of uh, taking care of this area and making it look better. And then you can see us doing some of the updating to our landscaping around some of our parks. And then there's the infamous marina fence, and that is actually the backside. So when you see the fence, you probably don't see this, but that's what the backside looks like uh, on the other side of the fence, which is an area, yes, we do have to still maintain. And then you see the nice little buff area in front of the fence where we've put some landscaping in and created uh, what I would tell you the first steps of uh, beautifying that park. Now, in the big picture, we're nowhere near taking steps to beautify that area. Uh, obviously, the restrooms are getting ready to go out for bid, and we're going to move forward with that. What we don't want to do is go down there and do a lot of landscaping or sodding of grass and then have somebody, a contractor, come in and try and build a building because we're going to have to do all that over again. So we're just going to wait. And uh, but you'll see that that area start to take shape again, taking a, you know, as Dr. Woodruff likes to say, and, and I agree, we take one step at a time, and this is just our another step in this area. And then you just see us, you know, this is who we are and what we do. We mow ball fields for Susan's uh, programs, for the youth leagues, for the adult leagues. We're edging constantly. Um, this is who we are and what we do, and we're proud of it. Uh, what do we have in front of us? We've got some replacements over at the Jacksonville Commons, some trees that are, are, are not doing well or have died, and we, we're going to have to tra change those out, and uh, we're in the process of doing that. We need to finish the, uh, and actually this is more of a city project. We talked about this last uh, two months ago, the piping uh, for stormwater and sewer that runs the length of the park. They're actually making good progress. Uh, hopefully the next time we meet we'll be able to talk about that they have finished if you have seen them down there they're slowly working themselves from the water back towards the stage and they're not quite halfway yet but they are making good progress better than I would have anticipated so we're excited about that uh, we're going to be adding benches and trash can and doggy pots on the rails to trail And that's pretty much who we are and what it is we, we've been doing. So where else are we? Um, you know, Susan and I have spent the last month and a half, uh, maybe the last three or four meetings with you, talking to you about our master plan. And we've spent the last about month and a half talking to council about what we feel like and what we've heard from our community where jacksonville needs to be not just where we're at today but where we need to be in the next two years maybe in the next five years in the next 10 years and we've shared a lot of that with you and most of it and uh we're going to be going to council and uh i'm going to slowly segue into susan and let her take that from there and and talk to you a little bit more about our process with the master plan and we'll go from there thank you sure. um so the master plan I'll, I'll continue with that we have um we're at what i would say the very final stages of our our, our final draft uh, we have had lots of folks looking at it we did send it to mr rogers as a representative of this group to look at it and he did like it and he gave us the green light to move forward with um, the edits that we had in plan so uh, what I can say is we are in the final stages and we are planning on going to council on June 8th with the final document to show them what we've come up with and I um, I'm really excited that they will like it they will approve it they will adopt it and they'll give us the green light to you know keep doing what it is we've been doing and keep doing what it is that we had already kind of already anticipated doing with our capital improvement projects and those sort of thing no big major changes on anything but it really is a nice document to just say 
this is what we, w this is where we want to go, and this is how we want to get there, and this is what we want for all of our parks. So we're excited, and uh, as soon as I have that approval on the 8th, you all will have a hard copy. Since we're not meeting until July, I'm happy to mail it to you or hand deliver it to you. Which would y'all prefer? I want to get it to you as soon as possible. So I don't <laughs> want to wait till July, I'm being honest. I want you to have your copy. You guys have given us fabulous feedback, yeah. and it's just as much yours as it is the rest of ours. Uh, so would you like me to put a hard copy in the mail? It's going to be a good little booklet, so, or I'm happy to, you know, if you want to stop by and say hi to us, you're welcome to come by. I'll swing by and get yeah. mine. Yeah. We'll save, we'll save yeah. a stamp. Yeah, save it. Yeah. Are you sure? Sure. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay, yeah. you all are fabulous. <laughs> if you don't, let me know. And I'm <laughs> well, you have coffee. <laughs> yeah, I could, there do you go. I could certainly do that. Um, so, yeah, I will have those for you as soon as I can. I will give you an email, send an email and say, they're ready. And so we're excited about that. Anything else on that? Not on the master plan. Okay. I do have one small thing to add that I did leave sure. out. Sure. It's a little bit of a big deal. We did apply, uh, and you've heard mm. us talk about part of grants. We did apply for a uh, part of grant, the Parks and Recreation Trust Fund, for the restrooms down at Sturgeon City and some of the other uh, the shelters that are going to be built down there. Now, we don't know if we'll receive one, but we, we did throw one together rather quickly. Uh, and we'll see how that goes, and we'll know something in the uh, early fall, and hopefully we'll get some additional funding or some extra funding or what, however you want to term that. Uh, you know, I, what I do know is, is the city's building down there, and any money we can get now is, I don't like to use the term free money, but let's use the term that isn't currently city's money. <laughs> yeah. The master plan that we are um, proposing is going to really helpful, hopefully help us with future grant applications. That's really a big one that the grantors look for. So that was a big driving force for us to update what we have and to make it as um, valid and as, um, you know, as such a professional document that I hope you all will agree that uh, we will be com that much more competitive in grant funding. So good things coming along, hopefully so. Um, okay, as far as my report, um, we are back to doing some great things. Uh, not that we haven't been, I won't say that, but uh, as you know, summer is upon us, and I think everybody should have our latest brochure in front of you. I don't think I was able to get these to you last time, but this does have all of our new uh, programs in it. It has everything listed in there. I'll just give you a highlight of a few things. Uh, we are thrilled that our splash pads opened up <coughs> for anybody watching. Hello out there, public. Splash pads are open. They opened up the other day. We have been um, uh, actively working to get them up to date and inspected. And as soon as we did, we were able to open it to our public. So both splash pads, Jack Emia and Northeast Creek Park are open. And they've been extremely, extremely busy. So... Uh, that's great news for us, and that is why Michael's shade structures at Jack Emia are put in, and we're hearing nothing but excellent feedback on those. Parents like a place in the shade when their kids are playing in the water. So, uh, Splash pads are up and running. We started our summer events and programs on Friday as well. Outdoor movie series started. We were happy that we were able to do it at the amphitheater, and with our COVID restrictions uh, lessening, we didn't have to um, ha limit our capacity. We had a huge turnout. It really was a nice turnout, and you could just tell people are happy to get back out there and enjoy some nice weather and some nice activities. Um, in addition to our summer programs, you can look in the book. We have a whole summer of nice programs. All of our concerts are planned. Our movies are planned. We have Jacksonville Performing Arts. We have a nice thing that they're going to be doing um, in the park. Onslow Winds will be, be I'm sorry, providing uh, concerts on Tuesday evenings. Uh, so there's just a whole slew of things for our families to do out there. Everything is free, so this is what we want to provide to our citizens and our families and our folks that live here. It's great activities that they can do with the families and not break the bank. So please, by all means, uh, continue the good work of being our advocates and sending your neighbors and friends our way so that we can just help them out if, uh, if as much as we can. Um, some other things I want to let you know is we have been doing really busy uh, programming with our volleyball. Well, volleyball has bled into our beach volleyball, which is a new league for us this year. Well, it was and it wasn't. We had to go to high, we had to go to beach volleyball last year because of COVID, but because of the response, we're adding a beach volleyball program this year in addition to our regular volleyball. So we're excited. Registration is open for all of you volleyball players. Um, we're also kicking off a, an adult open play volleyball league. 
Um, that's something that we haven't always done, but we get response from people that want to play adult volleyball. So we're, we're happy to be able to provide that now as well. And adult kickball. So all of you adult folks that may not be into softball, you can certainly come out and play some kickball with us. So we have some good adult programs going on. And then our registration for all of our fall sports will be in June, um, as well as our after school program. Um, all, of a, all of those program registrations will start. Summer day camp is full our summer program capacity went back up, um, not to pre-COVID numbers because we're still a little bit limited on where we're at, depending on schools. But we are thrilled that we did go back into, we increased our capacity and um, everything's full. I mean, that's a catch-22. I'm sad to say that everybody can't get into our program that are now calling us, but it's nice that we're able to provide that program and it's being so popular, uh, popularly received, which it has been in the past. And those kids, we get to go back doing some field trips that we haven't been able to do last year because things were closed. So kids are going to have a great summer this year and we're really thrilled about that. Staffing wise, I will just mention to you, I know I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. Staffing is a little bit of a challenge in some of our areas. We're good for the summer program, but I will just let you know that unless we find some swim instructors, it's going to be really a challenge for us at this point to offer swim lessons. So it's in here and we want to provide it, but we are not being successful with finding folks that are certified to teach swim lessons. Um, it's not uncommon. I'm hearing the same thing with lifeguard shortages and those sort of things. So I just want to let you know that in case you get a call or, you know, you hear anybody that's upset about us not having swim lessons, it's going to be the first time in, um, several, several years, us not providing it. Not because we don't want to, but we just can't find the folks to, to help us do it. So if anybody's watching and you can teach some lessons, by all means, give us a call. Um, other than that, I'll just move on to our big project of Jack Emmett. We're very excited that it has gone out to bid. It is a 60-day um, bidding process, so it's going to be out to bid for most of summer, but we're thrilled, thrilled, thrilled that it's out to bid, and we're looking forward to see what comes back on that project and then, you know, you know, do the whole process. But eventually awarding something to a fabulous contractor, and then they can break ground, and we can give you updates on that, on that lovely facility. So... Any questions? I kind of threw a lot at you on a, little, a lot of different stuff, but I have a really great One City moment, so I didn't want to hit on that topic. But any questions on anything thus far? Thank you, Chairman. Susan, yes. on the sounds of uh, summer and in, in the movie in the park, are the food trucks allowed to go out there? Yes. Okay. Well, they are, um, we, they are scheduled through us. Oh, okay. uh, what we, we, tr we have to we ensure that they have the proper uh, permits and insurance. So they have a few steps. So we invite them, um, and if we can, we try to vary it up and get them uh, scheduled for those events with us. But they do have to go through us, so they can't just show up. Okay, that's well, that's understandable. Because I had a call this morning about me being here tonight, making sure I said that hey, they really appreciated the food the food truck rally. It's like, well, that wasn't ours; that was the county. But they the wanted county. me to make sure that uh, we had a food truck rodeo at our jamboree event. Right. And it was extremely popular, but it was the same thing. They come through us, they get vetted through us, and then we schedule them. And, um, you know, with that event, there was a small fee for them. But, um, but yeah. So we had one at the Jamboree. Good. Okay. But good question. Um, I did want to mention, um, thank you, Michael, for reminding me, East Coast Invitational is coming. For those of you who don't know, it's a very large basketball program that a lot of high schools throughout the entire state and then some participate in. It is scheduled for June twenty. 4th, 25th, and 26th. So those teams, uh, we've talked to uh, uh, Wells Gulledge. He's, he's saying um, it's going to be one of the largest at 32 teams. Um, we have secured just about every high school we can secure for all of those kids to play. So we're really, really happy that, again, last year didn't happen, and so this year it is. And so we're happy that we're able to provide those facilities and the support staff for them and those kids to get back to doing what they do best and um, you know, have a great tournament. So if you if you want to come out and you're welcome to come to the Commons, Jacksonville High School. We got White Oak High School, Commons Middle School, um, North Side, and North Side. I believe we have all of them. So uh, let me know, and you're obviously you're welcome to stop by any time and check those games out. So it's a great event. Any other? Yes, sir. Yeah, I have one question on the uh, flag football youth mm -hmm. league and the volleyball youth league and the baseball youth league. 
I didn't see anything. You may have said it, but are those leagues, are they co-ed? Yes. Okay, so they are co-ed. They are co-ed. They are co-ed. I mean, we don't always have a lot of And that's good because, you mix, know, but there's we don't a lot ever, of little girls that would yeah. love to play flag We football. don't ever exclude anybody, and we've had, um, in the past in our volleyball program, we've actually had a couple of boys play volleyball for us. Yeah, I was going to say, I vouch for that. There's, there's normally a handful of them. Yeah. Yeah, we we don't we don't discriminate or we want every every child that wants to play, we want them to play. So yes, sir. Great question. Thank you. Good questions. Anything else for me? Yes, sir. Did you ever check into any information concerning country club property and uh, community gardens? No, I haven't got to that yet. Okay. Um I think what I need to do is come up with uh, look around other communities and see how they right. do that. For example, uh, you know, there's what I do know about community gardens is this: uh, Does the city run it? If it doesn't, how's it managed? Is the community going to manage it? Who's allowed to go out and work on? I mean, there's a lot of things, legwork things that we would want to work out. Uh, you can run a community garden in a lot of different ways. I think the challenge is deciding how, what way do you want to maintain run that. it. Right. right, right. How do you want to do that? Do you want to put that on the actual community? Right. Uh, and I'm not saying you do or you don't. It's those are the processes. Right. And I'll talk with Dr. Woodward. It's probably uh, going to be a partnership or something. It could be. Yeah. Sure. Sure. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other? That's it. Any other questions? Okay. All right. <clears throat> Next, we have the uh, council liaison report. Jackson. Um, budget season. That's what's going on. Continuously and any time, I tell folks, to, you know, listen and understand what's going on in your city by you know coming out and actually seeing it on G10. Um, one thing we did have some money that came into the city through uh, the American Rescue Plan. It's going to be they call it tranches which is basically two payments, and it's actually specified, you know, what you can use the funding for. So that's going to be a help for us going forward. Um, we have to actually spend that money by, uh, I think, December of 2024. So, but, um, yeah, so that's, that's great for the taxpayers. That's money that we don't have to utilize for that, you know, that we have to do other things that we might not have considered to do or actually take care of some things that um, we needed to get taken care of. So, but that's, that's basically it for right now. No. Thank you. Okay. Good deal. All righty. Um, next on the agenda is the planning advisory board liaison report. At our last meeting, uh, if you caught us on G10, our last meeting we were discussing a, a rezoning, and it was a rather significant rezoning. It was up and down North uh, Marine <coughs> Boulevard, went down behind the Kentucky Fried Chicken, down toward uh, uh, the old dentist office uh, back near uh, on, parallel to Onslow Drive. Uh, it, it was areas that in the past had been zoned um, commercial, and there were houses there, and if you're going to sell your house and someone's getting a loan, if you're not in the proper zone, they'll turn the loan down because if something happens to the house, you can't build it back in that zone. So what we were able to do is we, we were looking at those places that should be residential and we, uh, we approved this, the planning board approved them residential. Of course, now the city council gets to uh, look at those after a public hearing. So uh, we spent quite a bit of time with that. and. Uh, we barely had enough to make a meeting, so uh, there may be some openings that need to get filled on the planning board, but I was there. <laughs> and uh, that's it. Appreciate you. All righty. Next, we have our members' comments and parks reports. Mr. Ross. Uh, Bluton Park, uh, extremely good shape. Uh, water fountain, bathrooms. All the equipment, uh, except for there was one swing at the third one from the left. Uh, the frame is cracked, or the chain connects to the frame or the swing, and that needs to be looked at. Thank and, you. Uh, but uh, park was in great shape. Um, 
basketball courts, nets, everything looked good. Water fountain worked. Good job. Thank you. All right. Next, uh, Lori. Good evening. Um, <coughs> let's see. Richard Ray looked great. Everything looks, uh, the grass is, granted we haven't had any rain except for today, but the grass is going great. Flowers are blooming. Um, there's a lot of activity this weekend. I did check out Jacksonville Commons as I walked through. Everything looked good. At Jack Emmett, and I didn't check it today, but over the weekend there was two basketball nets that needed to be replaced. Hmm. Um, it was on Saturday. And then I was out there and out at North uh, Creek, Northeast Creek, looking at the splash pads. Slow start, but there was kids out there running around and playing and having a good time, so it was good to see uh, them screaming and hollering. And I don't know how warm the water was on Saturday, but they were out there running around. So, uh, And if I could, just give a shout-out to my daughter's doing volleyball and the staff at the, the volleyball Duan and uh, score girl uh, keeper, and they're doing a good job. I know it's with, with the amount of folks that aren't working, um, <laughs> running around and trying to find staff, they're doing a great job. Thank you. I appreciate so, that. I'll share that with Very you. pleasant, too. Thank you. Right. All right. Uh, Mr. Spring. Thank you. Uh, when I went to Sherwood Forest, uh, the park looked great. Uh, the water fountain worked. There was a young man under the picnic shelter just chilling, taking it easy on his phone. The playground surface, the black surface, that the rubberized surface, when I, first, well, when I got in my car this afternoon, I thought, that thing's going to be hot. But when I went out there and felt the surface, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So whatever is done to that, it doesn't seem quite as hot as, as, as you would think. It's, right. I guarantee it's a lot cooler than black asphalt would have been. Yes. Plus a lot safer to fall on. <laughs> but um, yes. I think Sherwood Forest uh, looks really, really uh, good. Uh, Branchwood, I have to always walk down to the bridge and walk back and forth a couple of times because I just like that bridge. Um, it was well used. There was a, a young man who'd ridden his bike down and was testing the swings out and having a good time. And there were a couple of people getting ready to uh, take their dog down there. I saw him on the way down. So very well used. Very happy. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hinkle. Uh, Northeast Creek looks great. Uh, it's well used. Uh, saw some people fishing there a week or so ago, and they weren't catching anything because there were a couple of gators over by where they were fishing, <laughs> which kept eating all the fish. So that was kind of funny. Uh, the uh, splash pad, I was there Friday when it opened. Uh, so a few kids, a few kids on Saturday, and Sunday the place was packed. Uh, standing room only. I mean, there were people out with blankets, pop-up shelters. Uh, it was, it, it's a popular place. Uh, so speaking of that, you need some more benches down by the playground. Uh, I mean, there are people everywhere. So somewhere around four or six would be good. I would prefer six. <laughs> more is always better. Uh, the drinking fountain by the snack bar on the baseball fields, I don't remember which one, but one of them, the pressure is like... Trickle. Yeah. Okay. So somebody get the little Allen wrench and tweak that thing up a little bit. The other one's fine, uh, but I can't remember which one it was. Uh, and on the other side of that building, which I guess you use it for maintenance or something like that, the bottom one of the doors is all rusted out. So... It still works, you know, but it just doesn't look all that great. The uh, orange flower on the splash pad is still just kind of dribbling. Mm. It's not really doing much. Uh, so that, And uh, my grandkids went to the movies in the park and had a great time. Yay. They were the ones that could really hula hoop the, the oh, best okay. out there Very in nice. case we're watching. There you go. But uh, it looks great. It's used a lot. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Sign um, Brook Valley or Northwoods, did we? I thought we did our last meeting. Uh, yeah, if you look under that's what I was meeting to the yeah. amendment to the agenda. Um, we assigned Phillips Park and Jacksonville Commons to Mr. Maxwell. Yeah. But Brook, we haven't done Brook Valley, we haven't we haven't done Brook Brook Valley, Valley and Northwoods. Yeah. 
Because we just got gyms. That's right. So we need to do those two. So we'll do those two. Um, we'll move on to, to mine. Um, so Georgetown Park went out there a few weeks ago. It looks really good still. Do we know what they're building up front there? Who is That's not us, is it? Not the city or anything? That sign and the the mason blocks and all that was there? I think that's something on Wasa. That's on Wasa. Yes, okay. yeah. yes, sir. Yeah. So Before the turn-in, right? Yeah. yeah. Right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. But other than that, Georgetown looks good. There was kids out there playing ball, playing basketball. Cool. So Awesome. Um, it looks really good. The courts look good. So um, no complaints there. Uh, Sturgeon City. Um, went out there. It looks Sturgeon City looks good, and the only thing I forgot to do was go check on the the picnic table at the. Um, we did tighten it. The show. Okay, you did. Okay, and it's so morning. that's the only thing I forgot to go check. Um, and I know it'll take you some time to time to you know I guess complete and repair those boards on the yes backside over there. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, but other than that, Georgetown and Sturgeon City look good. Look real good. All right. All right. Joseph? Yeah, thank you. Um, so we have L.P. Willingham, Kerr Street, and Riverside. Um, I know everybody used to like using that area for uh, pitchers, you know, for, you know, problem as well as they just shifted to the other side of the train depot now, so they're all by the caboose. They're still taking pitchers out there all the time for, you know, problem and graduation pitchers. So it still seems to be a popular place, even though construction's tearing up all the parks going down. Uh, you, may, you already mentioned that, uh, Mike, and that was great. Uh, there just another compliment the construction workers have done it they just didn't put up orange cones they actually put up the orange net fencing mm -hmm. all the way down and it's one of the cleanest work sites i've seen when it comes to government contracting so i thought that was quite impressive everything's been kept off the sidewalk so people are still util able to utilize it walking around um squirrels don't seem to care they're all over the construction site <laughs> as they're running through so they're they're still happy no matter what um, people are still at the other end uh, using the piers. Uh, we had some people utilizing the uh, basketball courts and the new nets that were in the new rims that were put up, which was great. Uh, some people were actually still using the tennis courts. I mean, they were, it, it was fun to watch a little bit on there because we know the floors are pretty torn up on them still. So watching the balls do some crazy things as they were playing. So it's not their skill. It was the courts. You know, I made sure that that was fine uh, just in case they're watching as it was. It was the court floors. Um, but uh, seeing the fence and seeing all the work that's been done over there, it's fantastic. Uh, uh, we've had, uh, uh, excuse me, the uh, New, River, uh, Spl uh, New River Splash, the running event this past Saturday that came up there. I know there was at least 75, 100 participants that came yeah. through there, so they had sure. vendors set up. It was actually a pretty cool event, a pretty hot event, actually. It was very hot outside. It wasn't, <laughs> it was a cool event. But... Um, Everything over there seems to be just in great order, even though the construction, it's moving along as, you know, you've said a lot faster than we thought. I got hope that, you know, maybe it'll be done early enough to uh, actually get some of our events that normally happen there in the fall and the winter. We might, you know, fingers crossed, they'll get Winterfest or National Night Out or something if we try That's to push it. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But yeah. I, I've got optimistic hope. <laughs> but aside from that, uh, everything looks great in those areas. So That's what I have. We have uh, Coach Reggie. Good evening. Um, I wanted to give a kudos to you all on the bike running trail. It goes all the way to Camp Majune. It's a couple of guys that we uh, ride it two to three times a week. Uh, the only issue we had was uh, you were doing the lights and, I guess, painting in there. Yes. And yes. We, the one guy, he just loves that trail because I see where you replaced a lot of the boards. Yeah. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, as Ms. Lori said, the commons area looks good, but there were a few questions. Will the skateboard park ever come back? Um, it, hopefully in some iteration. I don't know it'll be there, um, but we do. Um, we have looked at a skate park. Uh, in the future at possibly another location. Uh, Dr. Woodruff, I think, mentioned to council that there is a concern on liability. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know uh, what the future holds for skate park in general, um, liability-wise. Um, we hear the concerns. I voice them with Dr. Woodruff, and I think he's told council we're in a little bit of a hard place and a pickle with that one. So I don't have the best answer for you. Um, 
maybe something will change in the future and we can, you know, get it back in front of council as, a, as an option. But it's not looking too good from a liability standpoint. And that's not on us. That's from our state level, those folks that actually insure the city. Um, they're not insuring them to the level that they were, so. And, Mr. Oh. Mike, uh, is there any possibility of resurfacing the Commons basketball court? Yeah, we can look at that, mm -hmm. no doubt. And uh, there's just a lot of activity. You're talking about, I'm sorry, I just want to make sure you're talking about the outdoor court, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to be, I'm sorry. I, sometimes yeah, you I have it. to be clear. <laughs> okay. Number one, yeah, yeah. With that, it's not a whole lot. The skateboarders are in, they're the ones that are Get on, on the, court. the basketball court. Yeah. Um, youth baseball's going on, mm -hmm. and there's just so much activity in the commons. Sometimes I get up at zero dark 30 and go get coffee, and there are guys out there playing ball sure. at one in the morning, and I'm just excited and enthusiastic <laughs> for them to have somewhere to go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, other than that, that's all I have. Thank, Thank you. you. We really appreciate everything you all are doing. Thank you. Thank you. That extra parking out there really helps too. Oh my goodness, I parking can't tell right. you. We and yeah. I will just say this because um, you mentioned it, but our our those ball fields are pretty much booked every weekend now for tournaments. Um, the economic impact that those ball fields have are tremendous. And when he says that they're playing late, it's because they don't want to quit, and so they'll keep going pretty much into the night to get those games in so they, they can just pretty much keep playing and playing and playing. But that parking lot, I, I mean, it's hard to imagine what we did before that parking lot with those softball players. I'm not going to lie. I just, it's packed. I went out there Saturday morning and it was packed. Uh, during ECI. Yeah, ECI the too. I mean, all of it. It's, it's tremendous. With it's that. it's going to help. See, people, because when it, last weekend I was out there and I, you had a tournament and a, uh, I was walking by and a lady to her husband was like, I can't believe they're not charging for us to park here. Oh, how funny. Other well, you know, what's interesting um, is the front of the parking lot closest to the pond is utilized for all of the walkers and the mm -hmm. exercisers. They don't park in the commons parking lot anymore because that little, that whole section is full pretty much all day. And then, you know, the rest, so it's really multi-use on who gets to, you, who's utilizing that parking lot, which I just love to see every morning when I drive through it. I get, you know, it's just nice to see the variety of folks utilizing all of it. But, Yeah. Mr. Maxwell mentioned the skateboard park, and I, I have a question. Is the skateboard park area, that fenced-in area, is that big enough to do anything else with? We have actually talked about lots of things in there. I've, like we've opened it up for, um, for uh, soccer players. There's been some indoor soccer players that want a hard surface, and rather than be on our tennis courts, <laughs> we've done that. Uh, we've talked about pickleball courts in there so we are definitely looking splash at some good pad. Splash, splash pad, pad could yeah. possibly go in that location so it's it's um it's getting definitely used at, looked at as an option on multiple things but we have that in the master plan yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> there are there are some there's some things that the, it's it is actually being used for the soccer players when they need an indoor surface you know hard surface and um, there was something else that's already utilized it and i think uh roller derby contacted me as well on it yeah, so <laughs> we'll utilize it now as much as we can. Anybody want to go I mean, out that's there? That's not a lot of That's worth <laughs> That's worth <laughs> skateboarding. We're good there. <laughs> Woo! Because <laughs> it's a smooth, I mean, it's a pretty smooth yeah. concrete. It's not an asphalt, you know what I mean? So, but we'll, uh, anybody that needs to use it for something, be creative. And I'll tell you something else funny is um, we actually have a, a, a soccer team using the beach volleyball courts because they need practice on, <coughs> I guess, beach. <clears throat> Soccer is a new sport. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So they just need practice on sand right. rather than going to the beach. They're just using our volleyball, our volleyball, our sand volleyball courts for soccer. And I thought that was, you know, we can utilize just about anything if anybody has a need for it, but it's fine by us. But yeah, that's a new one for us. We just started this past week. They called and got permission to use it for soccer. We could probably dump a lot of sand at Phillips Park and do the same thing. Good. Yeah. We could, without a doubt. So that it's nice to see that people are just, you know, utilizing some of the spaces that we wouldn't normally have all that kind of stuff using used for. And, uh, very fluid for what you can do. We are. We need to it's be. Name of the game is flexibility. We, we love it. We have to be fluid. Thank you. Yeah. Or, <laughs> bullet. The 
exercise area across from the tennis courts. Yes. Did I ask you all about a crosswalk there before? Yes. And uh, I have looked into it. I need to follow back up with the uh, safety group there. Um, yes. So the process, there's a, there's a there's little a process. bit of a lengthy process to put one in. I'm not saying we can't put one <laughs> in, but there's a group uh, of, that meets to dissect whether or not areas need a crosswalk. And I think Susan, what she's saying the is The police does a study. Yeah, they do an actual study on... Instead of saying, yes, we'll put a crosswalk there. It's, it's, there's a, yeah, mm -hmm. but we'll definitely look into that. I'll follow back up on Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Next item is one, one city, one moment. Susan? All right. So I didn't mention any of this because I had lots of other stuff I was talking to you about, but we had our Jacksonville Jamboree. Um, it's, as you know, our large event that we have in the first Saturday in May. It looked different. There's no doubt about it this year. Um, and uh, it was different. It was on a much smaller scale, but it was so wonderful because people came out in droves, if I'm being honest. Um, and it, it was nice. We changed the times. We did, we did change some of the activities. Uh, we did a lot more food-centric as opposed to amusement amusements. Um, but it went really, really, really well. And what we were able to do as an add-on, because we didn't have as many amusements, um, is we shifted it over into our laser light show that night. So hopefully you have heard about that, but can I just tell you it was Amazing. phenomenal. It really, really was a neat, neat event. And we were able to do two shows. Um, they started at 8.30 and I want to believe 9.15 or 9.30, and we sold out on both of them. And it was just a really nice, diverse activity for all ages because, you know, it wasn't geared strictly for kids or families. We saw a lot of folks across the board coming out and just enjoying that even those both of those scheduled events. So um, we were proud to be able to provide something different to the community and we got really great feedback. So I don't know what the future holds. Um, that was diverted funds from Jamboree. So I can't say right now we're going to do it again because that was diverted funds. I'd, I, I'd have to, you know, that's something that's a budget decision. So, but it was a great, um, it was a great event for us to pr provide in their cars in a safe, safe venue. So uh, thank you to the college. They let us use their, their parking lot. So that was wonderful. That was our one city moment. So. Any questions? I just want to recognize uh, <coughs> Parks and Rec. They had a picnic at Northeast Creek, and due to bad weather, it had to be rescheduled and <laughs> had a drive-by to pick up your food. And it was handled very well, and uh, food was good. So <laughs> Thank you. It was good, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good deal, Jay. good deal. All right, well, that's going to... In our meeting, next meeting is July 26, um, 6 p.m. So I want to thank everybody for attending. Yeah, I just want to add one other thing. Yeah. So, and it is about the skate parks, and, and I just want to be clear. And Susan, I think she was telling you one of the issues we have with the skate parks is the, the, the League of Municipalities, who is our insurer, they've canceled. It's not just the Jacksonville thing. They do not provide insurance across this whole state for skate parks, okay? And I'm going to tell you why. It's because of lawsuits, okay? It has now become, they're upside down. It's, it's too costly. They can't keep up. So I wanted to be clear with you about that and, and make sure you understood, you know, uh, why skate parks, for the near future at least, are not part of, who we are or what it is we're doing because the liability is too great. All right? Can it be fixed, it be fixed through the legislature? Uh, I'm not sure if it can be. I, I don't know the answer to that. I think, you know, I don't know how you fix somebody's ability to, to, to file a lawsuit. Right. Or insure. Yeah, to be oh. insured. That's the thing. Because yeah. it, it would probably yeah. have to be a private entity. Yeah, it'd be a right. private. And then again, the liability on it, someone right. bringing yeah. that you, ups. Yeah, you know. So it's, it's, I just wanted to bring that to your attention. That's it. Okay. Thank Great. you for letting me do that. Yeah, no problem.
Thank you. Any, anybody else got any questions? Anything before we adjourn? Motion um, adjourn. All right. Second. Thank you. Yeah,